So I was just talking to this brilliant student who's a little bit of a slacker, as many brilliant students can be. You know how they are. They've got it so good. They like to relax a little bit, lean back and fold their arms. Anyway, he says, what's been going on lately in physics? And I say, I'm about to teach the twin paradox. This is real. I, I do actually have a student right in front of me right now. And uh, he said, what the heck? And I said, well, you have to know that time slows down for moving people. In fact, the closer you go to the speed of light, the slower your time appears to be going. So if you look at someone like, <clears throat> well, I'm about to start the story, but imagine you're looking at someone who's moving really fast. You would see their time as going slowly. Their tocks, their tocks would click slowly, their clocks would tick slowly, and their brain would think slowly. Everything about their time as they're zooming by you is very slow. So I wanna set up the story for you. This is a classic story called the twin paradox. I did not make it up. This really calls to a head the big problem that we had at the end of the last video, and that is that uh, it's relative who's moving, right? So imagine that on Earth, Earth is now red and charred with battle, there are two twins who are born, and they are, of course, Zach and Cody. Here's Zach, and here's Cody. And Cody gets into a, um, <clears throat> a rocket right after he's born. And he goes out into space. This is Cody going into the rocket. And the rocket goes, Now, suddenly it looks like a fish. Sorry, that's no good. Uh, let's put some more fins on there. Yeah, now it's a mutant fish rocket. Cody's on here, and Zach's still on Earth. And Cody is going to go 87% the speed of light. Because the cool thing about 87% the speed of light, this is his... Um, I'm gonna say 87% C, I guess I could write it as 0.87 C. Now, what that means is that, well, remember we said like delta T, this is the time that Zach's gonna think Cody's clock is doing. It's gonna be Zach's time, which is delta T naught, cause Zach's not moving, clearly Cody is moving, right? And he says it's that times gamma. And gamma, well, delta T naught, gamma is this thing where it's like one divided by the screw of one minus beta square. And remember that beta, you probably don't remember this, dear student, one divided by one minus v squared over c squared. And so if I plug in v as 0.87, the wonderful thing is that all of this stuff for 0.87, 87% the speed of light or so, I'm rounding of course, but all of this stuff reduces to two. So for them, the time that Zach thinks Cody is experiencing, I guess I could say Cody's time, delta t, equals delta t naught, which is Zach's time, times two. All right? <laughs> no, of course it's right. <laughs> I did it, right? <laughs> yeah, so look at this. This equation right here says that Cody's time is running slower than Zach's time. That factor of two says it takes twice as long for Cody to get something done as it does for Zach to get something done. Like a light clock to go um, from this position to that position to that position, the light will go pew, pew. It takes twice as long if that's velocity there is 0.87c. Go look at that previous video if you want an explanation of what gamma is and how we get that. But I'm gonna say that Cody is going 87% the speed of light as seen by Zach. And so what's happening is that Cody's gonna go out for 10 years of Zach's time. And Cody, therefore, is, ooh, if Cody goes out for 10 years of Zach time, then Cody's going to experience five years. Five years as seen by Zach. You with me? Cody goes out and experiences five years as seen by Zach. Then Cody turns around immediately and he's got this mutant space fish that he turns around and he's inside of here and he goes back. And it takes him, I'm assuming he's gonna go at the same speed back again, 0.87c. It takes him another five years as seen by Zach. All right, fair enough. So when Cody arrives back, Zach is 10 years old. 10 
years old. Cody, wait a second, Zach is 20 years old because he sees he spends 20 years for Cody to get there and back. Cody spent only five years to get there and another five years to get back. So Cody is only 10 years old. That's not a paradox because, I mean, the issue is, this is a little bit weird, but I don't want this to be a paradox for you. The, the fact that they're different ages isn't a problem at all because they had different experiences. Now, Cody was going 87% the speed of light, and then he turned around and he went 87% the speed of light. But I want you to think about where the paradox is here. Are you ready for the paradox? Are you ready for the paradox? Okay. Okay, here's the paradox. The paradox is Cody thinks that Zach is going that direction while Cody is going this direction. Cody thinks he's at rest, right? And he thinks Zach's going that way. So when Cody goes this way, Cody thinks he spends 10 years going this way. He's looking at his clock, looks like it ten, takes 10 years. And he thinks Zach is only spending five years. Then Cody turns around and he's like, and goes back this way. And he thinks it takes him another 10 years to get back because he thinks that Zach is moving and not Cody. If you look at your nose throughout the day, you won't think you ever move. You think everybody else is moving around. You think the earth is moving, etc. But your nose is always with you. So here's my point. The paradox is this. These appear to be symmetric situations because Cody's going and then turning around and coming back, as seen by Zach. And Zach says, oh no. Oh no. Cody doesn't think the same thing at all. Cody thinks that Zach takes off this way and turns around and comes back. But that can't be true because when they get back together, they are actually different times. This has been done. They took an atomic clock and they put it onto the SR-71 Blackbird, the most awesome plane that you will ever hear about. Go look up the SR-71. Seriously, stop the video right now. And they shot it around the world and brought it back and landed and it was a different time than a clock that had been still on the Earth. And in fact, the SR-71's clock was slightly slower because it experienced time more slowly. So there's a real effect measured all the time and it's taken into account by um, GPS satellites and all kinds of things that need to be extremely accurate. And yet it's a paradox here because there seems to be symmetry, there's not symmetry. Can you find the problem? What principle was violated in this problem? Good luck.